job. You've got a really fast A drill key that I'm just so impressed. <laughs> and um, I practice that drill all the time. What I want to talk is about the beginning. I felt like you picked a great tempo. Um, maybe I felt like that tempo may have been too fast. So I feel like as flute players, you know, any piece that we play, whatever instrument we play, it's important that we pick a tempo that we are comfortable with because this piece is is pretty tricky. You know, like all that um, chromatics, ta -ta 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 -ta, like, you know, that's not too easy. I play at an opera house, right? Um, I feel like your sound needs a little bit of echo, you know, and a little bit more of a spin. So I did like your high F sharps, and um, I am thinking I kind of want to work with you on the opening lines, okay? So what I want is for us to start this piece again, and I want like a bit more vibrato on that high F sharp, right? So. Okay. And when you play all those like dotted eighth notes, if you can just play them just a tiny bit longer. I, for, it sounds nice, sure. To my taste, it should just be a bit like, you know. So that every note is really singing, you know? Um, shall, we, shall we start from the top? Okay, that, that was much better. Beautiful job. You've done many great things um, in this. I, I couldn't compliment you enough. But, you know, maybe try to, like, play those triplets a bit faster. You know, do you know Mahler 5? Yeah. By any chance? The yeah. beginning solo? Yeah. -da -da I played it, like, my last year at Curtis. And so, you know, the conductor looked at the trumpet player and he said, those triplets should be like played a bit faster. That's kind of like what Mahler wanted, apparently. You know, they are marked as triplets, but then and the same thing here. Let, let's see if you can actually like give me more sound on those notes. Um, <clears throat> what, and then like maybe like do it faster and like really think like a march, you know? <laughs> Yes, it's a it's way better. Bravo. What a great piece. I think I can give you some comments if it's cool. Um, mm -hmm. And um, this part, like the lento, this tends to happen. Like when we get to like a slow part and then we have like really fast notes, um, we kind of like lose the lyrical aspect just a bit. Okay. And I thought maybe you did just a tiny bit. Okay. So. What I kind of heard was something like... 
Um, what I want to hear is like, I just want a bit more of shape. Do you want to just try that part again and then like we'll go back a bit. Yes. Yes, it's a bit more consistent. The direction is there. I didn't feel like you were rushing as much as that. So I, I would like to work on the beginning with you um, okay. a bit. Okay. So in this note, it's a bit low. Okay. It's just, and it has kind of like a carrot on it. So it's not really an accent. You needed to play those low notes just a bit out more. Okay. And so what I'm looking for more is like, Okay. Something like that. And then What what do you think? Could we could we do that a bit? This was way better. It was very good. Uh, I, I know sometimes like we go to perform and maybe we don't. Uh, but really, the first note is really important. And this was way better. You have good vibrato, but it's just like maybe, you know, this is very interesting. Like Marcel Moise is one of the forefathers of the flute. And he would say like, I don't vibrate. But of course he vibrated, right? you know? But then <laughs> he had like this vibrato that was really part of the sound, you know? So just make sure as full as you play, make sure the, the vibrato just doesn't go too much over the sound and make sure that you cannot, that you cannot count it, but it's really part of the sound. And it's like, let me see if I can. Um, maybe like when you're practicing, try and like play it without, without vibrato once just to see what's it like. That, that part, you see, it's like getting a bit stuck, you know? Do you kind of see what I'm getting at? Um, do you want to like start right at that D flat? Just remember, like flow a bit more on, mm -hmm. on the 16th, the 16th notes, especially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bravo, good job. And by the way, that last note, I know you can get it perfectly because you did it the first time. And um, I, I like the timbre you got on it. The one thing I will add, you know, if you can, um, try to like stretch the breath a bit more.
maybe like breathe after that low note. I felt like you have very strong rhythm overall. Um, do you have measure numbers? Oh uh, yeah. Do you have measure 33? Do you want to play those a bit just until the trill? Okay, just so just like start at 33 and play the four bars, okay? Okay, good, good. Um, so this, I chose this particular spot because I feel that we as flute players, we have the tendency to play our high notes louder, which is it's the natural tendency of the instrument. But then I feel like we never give enough on the bottom, okay? If I can at least show you what I'm trying to get at, okay? did you see what i did differently so i definitely want more of those like bottom notes and i want less of the top notes okay okay there is improvement Love is a rebellious bird, that's the title of the song. And, um, you know, Carmen is basically um, this gypsy woman that works at the cigarette factory, right? The guards, all the guards try to flirt with the girls, but then she's everyone's favorite, right? But then she notices the one guard who's not looking at her or giving any attention to her. And so that's when, the, when she sings the Habanera. So she's trying to, like, get him. Um, I always like played this theme with more, like with more sound, you know, 